First up, the University of Hong Kong has removed prominent pro-democracy activist Benny Tai from his position as an associate law professor at the university. Tai played an active role in the umbrella protests of 2014. He also participated in the massive demonstrations against the controversial extradition bill last year. He was handed a 16-month jail sentence for two public nuisance charges last year. But he was released on bail after he filed an appeal. His conviction, however, triggered a review of his teaching position at the University of Hong Kong. The governing council had initially decided against dismissing Thai, but on Tuesday, the decision was reversed. Earlier this month, Thai was targeted by the Chinese regime for his role in organizing an unofficial primary vote. The Chinese liaison office welcomed the decision by the university, calling it an act of punishing evil and promoting good. Benny Tai has openly hit out at the Chinese regime for orchestrating his removal. He said that the decision to sack him was made by forces outside the university through its agents. Tai also said that his removal confirmed the fact that the One Nation, Two Systems formula has effectively ended in Hong Kong. And for more on that, uh, we are joined by our correspondent Richard Kimber, live from Hong Kong. Hi Richard, for those uninitiated, if you can elaborate further uh, on uh, this professor's case and the uh, initial reactions that have come in so far. Yes, this has really sent shockwaves through the pro-democracy activist community here and also the university teaching profession because although this is only one case, it's important to understand that Benny Tai is a highly uh, prolific pro-democracy activist and a very well-known figure here. He was the organizer of the Occupy Central movement back in 2014 that lasted some 79 days in Hong Kong and as you say also a key organizer in the pro-democracy primary elections just a couple of weeks ago. So a very well-known figure. Now his sacking is particularly frustrating to pro-democracy activists because this decision had actually been given the all clear effectively by the university's own senate made up of university academics. They had not seen a necessity to fire Mr. Tai, but that decision then overturned by a new council with some representatives from the government and outsiders not within the university. And so that decision has been one of the reasons that people are so frustrated here because they see this as being done by not the university itself, but as by Benny Tai saying himself, by higher powers outside of the institution. And that's why he's saying that this is something that should be challenged. Now he's saying that he will take this to the chief executive Carrie Lam, and he's also getting judicial advice about whether or not there's any kind of legal overturn possible because of what's happened here. But he says as a lawyer, of course, he should know himself as a legal professor that he thinks both of these efforts will be futile. I was just coming to that. What is the legal recourse here for the professor? Well, he says that in both these cases, he doesn't expect any change from Carrie Lam if he approaches her, although he says she does have a responsibility as a de facto representative and institution that's an educational part of Hong Kong society to actually deal with this in a responsible way. But he's not expecting any kind of support from her. And there's very little expectation that that will be possible because the Beijing liaison office that interfaces between Hong Kong and China has already made clear that it thinks this decision is just and that justice has been served. And it's even described Mr. Tai as being an evil force behind spreading the idea of pro-democracy subversion in Hong Kong. So it's unlikely that this will be overturned. He, though, is trying to rally support in other ways. He's set up a, a patron funding page online to try and get support financially and also try and spread his own legal teachings in that regard if he's no longer part of the university. But it sent shockwaves through the uh, profession here of teaching because there have been calls for some uh, universities around the world to boycott relations they may have with Hong Kong University. And there are also concerns that because of the impact of this happening at such a prestigious Hong Kong University name here that many teachers and professors who might have been considering coming to Hong Kong may be turned off now by the idea that their, their own uh, freedom of speech may be challenged if they try and teach in a way that's no longer thought to be acceptable here in Hong Kong. 
All right, we're going to leave it there for the moment. Richard Kimber, appreciate very much joining us with those details and perspectives. A very uh, curious case there of uh, that professor who's now been removed uh, from his teaching position. And uh, the allegations, of course, coming in that this is a decision that's been taken due to forces from outside, of course, referring to...